Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, thanks for tuning in again to Spirit Rep House. Today we'll be discussing substrate. Are you using the right substrate? I don't know. Hmm? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But hey, I'm going to discuss it either way. So hey, if you want to look at it, take a watch. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Paul with Spirit Rep House again, and I got something that's really that's needed. <clears throat> So Lynn, my significant other, always gets, she checks our Facebook, right? She checks our Facebook, she checks our Instagram. And one of the key things that continues to pop up is battles over what's good for our reptiles and what isn't. And, you know, sometimes we might feel like something is not good for our reptile. But if we were to weigh it out and weigh out the pros and the cons, a lot of different types of substrate because that seems like that's where the battle is. Like, hey, you're using this or you're using that. You're great or you're an idiot. <laughs> that's not really cool, right? Because we should all be trying to spread love in this and help each other out. So the purpose of this video is to quickly and to the point get to all the substrates that we got. And of course, you'll be able to see picture in the picture of the exact substrate that I'm talking about. So when you go to your local Petco, PetSmart, Pet Supplies Plus, if you order it on Amazon or through one of the other reptile distributors that you'll feel confident that you know a little bit more about the pros and the cons of the substrate that you're using. So without anything else, I'll go ahead and start. So the first thing I would like to talk about is Reptisan. So <clears throat> if I had to say from one being the worst and 10 being the best, as far as holding humidity, because these are pros and cons, holding humidity, I gave it a one. So I rated it as, you know, not very well, but it can, you can use an under tank uh, heat mat as well as a over tank heat lamp with it. Um, another thing that you can do with it is, as I'm reading my, my sheet too, is that it does mimic natural habitat. So if you have a bearded dragon or something else that's from an arid climate, um, of course we're doing research and seeing where our reptiles are from, right? So if it is from an arid climate, that will more than likely mimic that environment. Um, another thing is that <clears throat> The Repisand is easy to spot clean. Wherever they poop or defecate, um, you can reach right in and grab it. I mean, for your small cleanings. Now, of course, when you totally clean, it doesn't matter the substrate, you're taking it all out, starting with new or disinfecting it anyway. There is a risk of impaction. Now, you can get, a, you can get around that when you feed your animals. So if you get an escape-proof dish and put it in there, your animal will eat off of that. Um, of course, if you had a snake like a sand boa, you could actually put your sand boy in one of these type of bowls and feed it in there and that way it won't get any impaction then just you know allow your snake to go back into its regular enclosure um let's see it will promote reptisan will promote burrowing it will promote shedding you know it'll aid in the shedding and it will promote uh digging which is a key characteristic for some of the reptiles especially if we're trying to keep their nails filed down or just to make them feel confident during the breeding season. A lot of times females or males will have certain displays of uh, mating behavior. Um, they're trying to get it on, so that's what they do. But so overall, I would say Reptisan, I would say it wouldn't be my first choice, but now you got the pros and the cons so you can weigh it out. The next one is the Desert Blend, which is the ground walnuts. And so I kind of put that in the same category as Reptisan. So the impaction risk is higher with that if you feed on it. But of course, you know, you could use an insect escape proof feed, feeding dish or feed out of this and that way your animal won't get impacted. But it, the risk is there. And if you get impacted with uh, the crushed walnuts, it will probably hurt your animal a little bit more. But let's see, I'm gonna run down the things that can be used with a heat mat and a heat lamp. Um, it will mimic natural behavior. Um, because I don't know if animals really know that a bred in captivity, what sand actually feels like until you give them sand. So if you use that, which I, me personally, I wouldn't use it, but I don't have animals that come from habitats. like It will promote burrowing. Um, it will assist in shedding and it will promote digging. So, you know, we're trying to keep our animals as natural as we can. So there are some, those are some of the pros and cons about the desert blend or the walnut, uh, crushed walnut. Now, moving right along is the old tried and true Aspen bedding. So when, again, when I was in college, we had only a couple of choices commercially. So Aspen bedding was one. So the one good thing is if you do use Aspen bedding, it does promote natural behaviors for your 
corn snakes, your milk snakes, your bull snakes, your rat snakes, your garter snakes. I mean, any of those snakes like that, king snakes, it promotes, um, and even hog noses, it will promote their natural behavior so it'll increase the, act, the likelihood that they'll acclimate well and they'll continue to feed which i don't know if you really have a hard time feeding those animals anyway but let's get to it aspen bedding i gave it a four for holding moisture so it's not the best thing and if you really wanted it to hold moisture you'd soak the tank pretty much um let's see it, it you can use it with a heat lamp and a heat mat but again you know i should have said this earlier but you need to use a thermostat with that um, there's a lot of different types, but you want to set that temperature to the range that's best suited for your reptile. Um, let's see. It will mimic natural behavior because it's a natural fiber. Let's see. Uh, you can spot clean with it. There is, I gave it a five for risk of impaction because a lot of the times these are snakes that are on this. But to be safe, you can take the hiding dish, whatever you have, and you can use the tongs and hold the feeder animal over a bowl like this or whatever hides you have upside down. Let the animal feed in there, hold the tongs, whether it's live or frozen thawed. And if it starts wrapping it up in here, the chance of it eating it in the same dish reduces that risk altogether. But I did give it a five. Um, it does, for burrowing, I gave it a nine. For helping in the shed, I gave it a seven. Um, so it's, it's really good for that. And it does promote digging for a digging animal, but if we're talking about snakes, we're gonna to stick to burrowing because I don't know any snakes with legs. I don't know snakes I know with legs are human. So we have terrarium moss. Um, I tried that a couple of times and it worked great for holding humidity. I think, I don't know if there's anything better for holding humidity. It just soaks up everything like a sponge. You get a little small block and it blows up much like Reptichip. Um, so I gave it a 10 for that. You can use a under tank heat mat and a heat lamp again set to a thermostat with the terrarium moss. Um, it does help mimic the natural behavior from snakes or animals that are from tropical conditions like rainforest-like conditions. It's very good for them because then you don't have to worry about a missing system or anything, but a missing system would be good. And let's see, uh, there is a, I gave it about a six for impaction just because it does have some loose pieces, but I think that if it got to that point, you would be able to see it and pull it off of the prey item before it got to that point. And again, you can use insect feeders for your animals and stuff like that. Um, let's see, it does promote some burrowing for those animals. So, you know, I don't have any frogs, but if you have frogs, but salamanders in particular, they would love to have the sphagnum moss. But there you'd probably have to control the mold risk. And it does have a tendency to pr produce some sort of like fruit flies or something. So you might have to deal with that separately um, because that would be a pest that would be introduced from the substrate. Um, let's see, it does help in the shedding, in which I gave it a nine because it holds moisture as well as it will promote digging, so I gave it a seven. Um, moving right along, we got the jungle mix, which is the fur and the sphagnum moss mix. Um, just straight up, I gave it an eight for holding moisture. You can use it with a heat lamp or a heat, uh, under tank heat mat. Man, I'm getting all tongue tied, but just use a thermostat, of course. Um, it does mimic natural behavior. I gave it for spot cleaning. I gave that a six because it's kind of more clumped up, you know, with the fur and the sphagnum moss, it'll clump up so you can reach in and grab it on your spot cleans. Uh, let's see, there is a, I gave it a three for impaction. And let's see, it does promote some digging because it's something that the animals can dig in and it's kind of wet, so it does mimic like some, some type of soil, as well as uh, it'll promote shedding and digging. Let me read, see if I can read my own writing, guys. Um, we got finely ground corn husk. So it's the corn husk fibers. Um, for holding moisture, I gave that an eight. You can use a heat lamp or a heat mat with a thermostat with it. Um, it does mimic natural behaviors. You can spot clean it. I gave it a six out of 10. Um, for an impaction, I gave it a four as far as a risk out of, you know, with one being the, race, the, the worst. Because if you feed it on there, if it gets enough, I know that some of the animals can digest a little bit. But again, I would ask you to use escape proof insect dishes or just to feed into your hide. And so I keep talking about a hide. So if I were gonna make this a hide, which I, I will, what I would do is I would cut it. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. But so this would be my hide. So I would make this, and this is something you can get from Walmart. You can get five of these for like, uh, what do you say, baby? About, Six, seven dollars? 
486. So, you know, hey, that's my numbers, girl, so, right there. So, for 486, you can get five of these. So, you got five hides for your animals or just one hide and then whenever you want to switch it out. But I wanted to cover that because I keep talking about a hide and I keep showing you a bowl. So, um, it does, I gave it a seven for promoting burrowing as well as for promoting digging. And I gave it a seven for helping the shed because it will create that surface tension that will allow the animals to rub themselves against it to peel that excess or dead skin off. Um, now let me go to reptile bark. There's a lot of negative stuff about reptile bark. Um, there is, and, and it's justified. I mean, it's something that doesn't really digest well in the animal's stomach, but again, back in the day, in the 90s and the early 2000s, that was one of the main options. That was the option number two, outside of using something that was totally not natural. So with reptile bark, I would say that it does hold moisture because this is a pro and a con video, not a, oh, this is wrong or, oh, this is right video. So uh, the reptile bark, I gave it an eight. You can use a heat mat or a heat lamp with it with a thermostat, of course. Um, it does mimic natural behavior because it's natural. Uh, you can spot clean with it, but I gave it a four because it's, you know, it doesn't really spread out that well. So if they feed you know, on the side of it, you'd still have to clean that part up. So I gave it a four. Uh, there is a risk of impaction, which I gave it uh, an eight, you know, because it, it's it's true. It, you can't hurt. But again, if you feed on this or an escape proof insect dishes, then you, you should be fine. Um, it promotes burrowing. And it helps with shedding. I gave it a six and an eight there, as well as a seven for promoting digging. Because for some animals, they just like knocking stuff around and like rearranging stuff. Some snakes like to rearrange stuff. So that is a natural behavior for them, especially if they're burrowing type of reptiles or they just like to climb and just kind of make things their own. Um, so that's that. So the next one will be corn husk. So corn husk is what we use now a lot more in the reptile breeding. I'm not sure how many people use it in reptile keeping, but I, I definitely would because there's a big bang for the buck. You can get a cube of it and you can fill up a whole Walmart tote with it. So it's it's compact until you have to use it, whereas a lot of the other things, even just to have them in storm, they're messy. Reptile chip is uh, something that, that we use and uh, I give it an eight for holding moisture. Of course, you can use a heat lamp or a heat mat with a thermostat with it. Um, let's see, it does mimic the natural behavior and because it's a natural fiber. As far as spot cleaning, I gave it a four just like I would, would with reptile bark. Let's see, it does have the risk for impaction. I gave it a four because if you, it, it, you know, I've heard that your animal can swallow small pieces of it, that it'll turn into a peanut butter-like substance. But whenever we feed our snakes, because I do keep our snakes on uh, coconut husk, is what I'll do is I'll turn their hides upside down, whatever hides in there, and I will hold the prey item live or frozen thawed um, over that, and I'll make sure that the snake grabs it, and I'll kind of pull them over to the area of the uh, hide so that when they start swallowing, that they can swallow it in there, and they're less likely to pull any of the coconut husk in with it. Um, so it's just a little bit safer way, but I did give it a four for impaction. As far as promoting burrowing, I gave it a six, helping with shedding, I gave it an eight, and it promotes digging, and so I gave it a seven. But the other ones I have right here with me, and I got paper, I got two kinds of paper. I got this thin paper that I got from Lowe's. It's just a thin type of paper, you can use this. Of course, this does not hold any moisture, so it'll get a one. You can use an under tank heater or an over, you know, a heat lamp with a thermostat with it. But this is really thin. The good thing about this that I didn't say with the others is you can buy a whole lot of this. So basically this is this is about $5 worth. And this is, I mean, you could roll it back and forth if you wanted to or not. Um, the other option that we have is butcher paper, which is a little bit wider. It's a little bit thicker. This is just plain white butcher paper that you would get, go to the butcher and get meat wrapped up in. Um, the good thing about both of these is they're, they do not stain your animals. So if you have an animal that will get in water and then go across newspaper, of course, some of that ink will come off onto the animal. Whereas with this butcher paper and what I'm gonna call brown paper sack paper, it will not. So that does not mimic natural, be natural behavior at all. I mean, it's, I, these animals never cross 
in the wild paper. So with that, um, you, it's, it's hard to spot clean. And once it gets dirty, you gotta, you gotta replace the whole thing because it will smear. It will have urine or feces on it. So you'd have to replace the whole thing every time. Um, there is no risk of impaction with it unless you just don't clean your cage. So I gave it a 10 for that. So that's a good thing about paper. Um, it does not promote burrowing, so I gave it a one. Um, it doesn't really help with shedding, even though they can, so I gave it a three because they can still push up against it, but it takes a little bit more work. And it does not promote digging, so I gave both examples of paper a one. Um, the next thing we have are turfs, which I covered this on how much did my ball python enclosure cost. And there's two types of turf. There's a, a mat, which is just a plain mat, and it's just green and there's no texture to it. And then we have the artificial grass, artificial turf that we picked up at Lowe's. And I just cut out a square just for this video. Um, one thing about turf is they do, they do not hold moisture well. So if you use an under tank heat lamp or, a, I mean, a, a overhead heat lamp and an under tank heat mat, then it will dry them out. Um, another negative thing that is just about this is your bugs can hide up under it. So if you don't feed in an escape proof dish, which I highly recommend in escape proof dishes, they come in all sizes. Um, your bugs or your crickets, they'll take refuge under this and they'll do the same thing under paper. Uh, let's see, it does not mimic natural behavior, but the grass on this one will a little bit, but because they can't dig into it, and if they dig into it too much, it'll fray and it might get caught in their claws so that's one con for it. Um, let's see. You can spot clean it to a degree as long as it's not extra wet. If it's wet, then you're probably going to have to take it out, in which I said you need to disinfect it with either a bleach solution by soaking it and then just use another piece until that gets cleaned and fully rinsed and dry. Um, no risk of impaction. It does not promote digging or burrowing or anything like that. And it will help them on the shed. I mean, because there is enough texture on this so that whatever animal we have on it can get shed. So, hey guys, that's it. Um, I hope that helps because I know, like I said, everybody doesn't have thousands of dollars. And sometimes when you go into these pet stores, you're a little bit confused. They have a, a lot of stuff or they have very limited stuff or the people there are not very knowledgeable or they're over knowledgeable, overly knowledgeable. So, um, I hope this helps guys and that's all I want to do is just tell you about some of the things that works for us and tune in again next time. Thanks guys.